In today's session, we're going to be taking a look at utilizing some very basic 3D workflows to control not only the composition of our generative AI images, but also the lighting. So let's get into it. All right, so for this video, we're going to be working in two main applications. The first one is going to be Substance 3D Stager. This is the 3D application of choice for me. And this is the one that I'm going to be using to create the scene, create the composition, create the proxy objects for the lighting. For the generative AI side, we're going to be using Adobe Firefly. So this is what I'm going to be using with my text prompts and, and the images that I generate to use. Now, neither of these softwares are absolutely necessary for this process. You can use Blender or Maya or Cinema 4D or V-Red or whatever 3D application you would like. You could also use another generative AI tool like a Stable Diffusion or anything else that can input images to help drive the final image output. Okay, so let's get into the very first project that we're gonna be taking a look at today. So for this particular project, I've had some ideas bouncing around in my head. Um, I just keep imagining these like this black and white photo series in like a futuristic but desolate like Japanese town, kind of how the future of Japan would look, but kind of in a grittier, uh, more dramatic, more cinematic looking. So I keep thinking about like these different scenarios. And I just have these pictures in my head. And one of the pictures that I have is, is basically this, this idea of a, a young child kind of sitting inside and looking out to the outside world. And I kind of have a very specific thing in my head of what I want this to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these some 3D geometry to go ahead and make it happen to drive a generative AI image. Okay, cool. So first off is I wanna create a little bit of a room. Um, it doesn't have to be the whole room by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's going to be about the bare minimum that a room uh, needs to be. And I'm gonna just make two planes. So I've made a plane for the ground and I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate it, and then rotate this up. And now we've got a wall as well. I'll just position that. Okay, great. So we've got a ground, and we've got a wall. Now, we need a child. So in order to get a humanoid character, I go to the Substance 3D Asset Library, and you can just type in through the search area, you can just type in human, and We'll limit this to models. Great. So now you've got some default, uh, you know, some default characters here, kind of in the Da Vinci pose. You also have characters in different uh, uh, situations. So you've got people sitting, walking, there's running, there's doing yoga, there's stretching, there's gesturing. Uh, so you can kind of use uh, multiple kicks. So if you need a fighting thing, you can do that. But I really kind of focused in on this seated character here. So I really wanted that for my scene. So I went ahead and downloaded the model. And to get that in the scene, I just need to drag and drop it in from my desktop. And again, it's got all five of them, but yeah, I don't need all five of them. So I'm just going to delete, 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 and delete. All right, cool. So we've got this childlike character. I'm just going to go ahead and flip them around because I want to see them, uh, get a rear look at them. Cool. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. So can... Um, function and be about, you know, just at least be big enough to where it makes sense that the child would be in there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to position the child closer to this wall. And now I want to just kind of position the camera. So I'm going to click the add camera button up here at the top. Uh, I kind of want this to feel a little off. So whenever I do that, I, I kind of want it to be more wide angle. So we'll just go ahead and call this like a 28 degree uh, lens here. It's also good for interior photography. You get that a lot. And then I'm just going to highlight the character and click the F key so that we can kind of frame around the character. So I'll just kind of set this up. Now we need something to indicate that there's a window and just kind of light spilling in here. So for that, I am going to create another plane. Switch back to my viewport camera so we don't uh, adjust this one. Uh, create another plane. I will take this. And the big difference between this new plane and the ones that we've created in the past is I want this to function as a light source. So I'm actually gonna go into the materials parameters of this light, scroll down to emission, and we'll just turn emission up to like 10. So now this thing is emitting light. I'll make it bigger. 
And it's hard. It, we, we're not seeing it right now. I should point this out. So I have to turn on ray tracing and you'll see it there. And we can adjust that value. So I just need it to be flat against the wall. Um, my trade form got messed up, but that's no big deal. I can just go to the rotation, just rotate it to straight up 90 degrees. Push it back against the wall. Lower it down. Okay, cool. Now, it's a little bit big. I don't want it to be quite this big, so we're going to go ahead and narrow it down in these object settings. So, I think we'll see which one. Yeah, so we'll just make it 10. i eh, make it a little bit wider than that and a little bit shorter. Drop it down lower to the ground. Like my floor-to-ceiling windows. All right, cool. Let's hop into the back end of this character. We've got this down. All right, cool. So the one thing that I want to create is a little bit more... Um, I guess just contrast, not for the final image, but just so that the um, the render engine or the, the generative AI tool has more of an understanding of uh, the difference between the walls and the windows. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, I'm also seeing that this is a little bit further from the wall than I would want. So I'm just going to push it back just a little bit more. You turn off stamping too, that helps. All right, cool. So this is the basic composition that I want. And I, I, I'm fully liking this kind of light wrapping around the character too. So I'm going to keep that in there. Because again, all the Gen AI is going to read are shapes. So it's shape here, shape down there, shape down there. Awesome. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and render this out. And I will just call this, we'll, we'll do this to my desktop, but we'll call it for demo. And I'm just rendering out it as a PNG. I don't, I don't need anything fancy here. All right, so the render took 20 seconds, got that saved out. Now what I want to do is I want to jump over back into Firefly and I want to start working with this. So in order to get to the section of um, where we can actually input this image, uh, we actually have to type in something first. So my default is always warm hat. Um, for any, it's always sunny in Philadelphia fans out there. It's uh, one of the characters Charlie wrote in his journal that he wanted a warm hat and nobody knew what that meant. And so instead of, oh, look at that. So I was typed in as my first one. Warm hat is now a temple. All right, awesome. All right, cool. I just, I just, I'm always curious as to, to what that, what that depicts. Cause it's like, he wrote in his journal, his friends want to get into him as a gift. And they're like, is it a worm? That's a hat. Is it a hat that wears a worm? Um, is it a worm that wears a hat? I should say. Anyway, okay. Um, so in here, all right. So we want to go ahead and set this up. So we want it to be widescreen because that's the, the, what we had before. For the structure reference, I'm going to go ahead and click this and then upload the image here. demo okay cool it's going to ask if make sure that we have all the um proper authority for that one um and then i want to turn up the strength to 100 like all the way up because i want this to match my final output as best i can uh i'm going to go down here and i'm going to go through uh just just some of this stuff to select kind of the look that i want again it's 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 a little bit of film noir look i want um See, I'll sc I scroll down towards the bottom because I want things like an antique photo. Because uh, even though it's like futuristic, I still want it to feel like it's there's some grit and some grain to it. So I still I'll do the nostalgic and futuristic. I don't know. I never quite know how it's going to process that. Um, I also I know that there's a grainy type of a thing in here too. Let's see if there's a search here at the top. Um, say effects dark. Yeah, I guess I guess it'll be oh grainy film. That's what it is. Okay, cool. So I've got all these. They they just kind of populated down here at the bottom. Oh, and let me scroll down to the bottom. I want this to be black and white. I want the lighting to feel dramatic. And yeah, we, we, it's a wide angle lens, so that shouldn't matter because it's just reading off the structure anyway. But that's fine. Okay, so for this one, what I want is a child sitting on the ground in front of a window, silhouetted. Um, rib light, we will say that we also want it to be a Japanese city in the future, dystopian, uh, moody, and cinematic. All right, cool. So let's see what we got. All right, cool. So we got this kind of grid panel. We're looking through four different ones and we're getting kind of exactly what we're looking at here. Now, again, you can continue to make modifications. You can continue to generate as much as you want, but this is just like the basic structure to get you what you need. 
Uh, and so again, this is great for like quick concepting and, and some other ideas there. Yeah, this one's nice. So I like, again, this is like a quick concepting idea. Again, like in my head, the child was looking straight out the window, but like, if you think about the child turning the head to the side, like what does that mean? Is the child dis disinterested in what's going on out there? Are they detached from it? Is it, is it too sad to look at? Like, again, this is all just the ideation process. This is not the final image by any stretch of the imagination. It's just like kicking through some ideas here. And that's, that's what I like about this process. All right, cool. So then, yeah, when you're done, you can just download it. Um, save it wherever you need to save it and go from there. Okay, so for the other example I want to show you, it's going to be this scene right here. So basically what I did here was pretty much the same methodology. I grabbed these uh, Japanese buildings uh, from the, again, Substance 3D Asset Library. In that same human package, there's characters walking. And so I grabbed this, it's just like a little kid walking here. Now, what I wanted to do to create the this look was I, I well first I wanted to make sure that the again the character had um some of this like cyan color on it again just to make sure because this is the you know opposite of a red basically I guess green would be but enough of a difference to make it separate from that now these red uh sections super simple all I did was I took again two planes and instead of making them emit light, I simply uh, gave them the material attributes of being bright red and uh, about 50% opacity. Um, and then I literally just stretched them out and tweaked them, tweaked them around so that they could be uh, where I wanted. So like if I wanted the light to come in from the other way, I would just flip this around and position that into place here. So we kind of go like that. We'll try this one. Kind of want it to be centered up here. Go ahead and slide this back a little bit. All right, cool. Now we turn the renderer on. We can see, oh, I think I, I lost I lost my opacity. So would you go ahead and set that up? So anyway, yeah, point clouds. All right, great. So now we've got the character kind of walking into this, this ray of light. Awesome. And they're going to be coming along here. So for that, we will go ahead and... Render this out. Okay, we've got to render it out. We can hop back over here into Firefly, update the image here. There it is. All right. Clone click open. All right, cool. Now we can just simply, you know, we've got some of the stuff that we want. Again, I want it to be silhouetted, rim light, in a Japanese Suzuki, in the future, dystopian, moody, stun, blah, blah, blah. I want all that stuff to be the same. It's just that beginning bit. So instead, I want a child uh, walking down street we'll do ray of light sunlight we'll say foggy too because we want that kind of fogginess to, to filter into because that, that'll that play a role in how the light because we want it to be like the light scatter um and now let's go ahead and take a look at the results okay and with that we've got our variations we've got the lighting we got light rays coming down now there are various degrees of success as to how sharp or how soft the light rays are and we can always tweak that in photoshop or whatever but again this is just a quick way to ideate some lighting ideas so that when you go back and put together your final composition your final image you get some really nice values so like looking at this like i really like the way that there is some kind of glow in the windows here and there's like a lot of value variation within the light rays so that that's something that i could pull from like now how sharp this line is i probably leave that behind but yeah um, but yeah, all in all, that's that's pretty much um, the workflow for doing this. And again, feel free to use Blender and Stable Diffusion or whatever you want to use to do this. This was more about getting your head wrapped around the idea of of being an artist that can control your generative AI images. It's like no longer think of it as that slot machine where you don't know what you're going to get and it's all chaotic. There are controls now to be able to harness and bring your vision to life using the AI tools. So that is it for today. And as a reminder, if you want to see some videos or if you have any questions or just want to reach out to me, you can leave them in the comments down below. Additionally, a quick reminder that we have a brand new 3D artist community uh, that's available on school. Uh, you'll find the link also in the comments down below this video as well. But it, yes, so keep reaching out. I'll keep making these videos, but let me know what you want to see. And I want to make sure that everyone knows uh, the different workflows that are available to you in various 3D setups. All right, be good, everybody.